Hey, all right, we're live. It's February 22nd, 22nd, yes, because tomorrow's the 23rd expiry. And uh, we've got a great show for you. I'm Shane from the Rogue Trader Academy. And I actually have a special guest today. Uh, my, my partner, my usual partner, Richard, couldn't make it. He had to uh, gallivant off in uh, Barcelona to do something, and he left me to do all the work. So uh, we have a guest from, from Derabit joining us today, uh, Pierino. And uh, I think, uh, Pierino, you're... You're the chief coffee boy, right? You're you're usually running around and getting everyone coffee. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coffee all day. Coffee, coffee, <laughs> coffee, and uh, watching the markets. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, you got, well, it's a twenty-four hour market, so you got to keep the coffee going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the meantime, I keep an eye on the options, looking at it, and making sure that everything runs as smooth as it always does. <laughs> Good stuff. So, what, what's your what's your actual position there? What's, what's your I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm I'm head of options. Uh, I have a task in the in the risk management area, yeah. uh, but uh, for, as the risk department, we have a risk. Uh, let's say a job on the risk, uh, but mm. also a job on uh, product development, thinking of new products okay. or uh, creating better algos uh, for the platform. Fantastic. Sounds like you, you wear a lot of hats. So basically, I can blame you. You're the guy that sends me those nasty emails when my margin gets too high, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do it manually. <laughs> yeah. I, thousands. Per yeah. Day. You're, yeah. That's I know. Right. That's you're like that rotten Shane. <laughs> yeah. If you don't do Good anything, stuff. we'll keep sending them. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, let's get the show on the road here. We've only got 30 minutes. Um, so uh, basically today we're going to cover uh, everything, you know, s- same every day, although the format's going to be changing a little bit. Uh, and I'll tell you a bit about that in a second. Uh, but today we're going to look at the current markets, uh, Bitcoin and ETH, uh, review the current trade strategies. Again, that's what's going to be changing. And I'm excited to tell you about that. And then the the topic of today. The topic, and it's honestly, it's not clickbait. It sounds like it, uh, but it's how to profit and uh, put lever- leverage in brackets from Horizon Bitcoin for free. Who doesn't want that, right? Who doesn't want that? And it's just a reminder, I'm Shane from the Rogue Trader Academy. You can always check us out if you want to trade and hang out with us during the day on Telegram and uh, join our weekly calls, uh, see our real-time trade alerts, all that great stuff. And we do live stream every day as we trade a little fund we set up uh, on the side, you can always do so. You can check out us uh, check us out at roguetrader.academy. Uh, as always, if you do not yet have a Deribit account, you better get on the ball because it's the place to be. If you look in the chat, you will see uh, a little link there where you can save 10% on Deribit uh, fees. And, of course, you will do us a solid or not as you wish. So let's just see. We've got the people come in. Giandrea Vladimir. Uh, Hello, uh, Vladimir. Yeah, great, great, great to see everyone. Uh, questions? Uh, da, 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 da. All right. I will get to those questions. And just a note for everyone, if you have questions, please try to put them in the Q&A section of the chat. That will help me kind of organize it for later. All right. So let's uh, let's let's uh, let, let's move on. Actually, you know what? Let me tell you about the format change. So what Richard and I decided to do is uh, – so in, in the past, what I do is I – I've got some discretionary accounts I trade and I will put different trades that I have going on. I'll say, you know, I'll mark them on the chart. I'll say, Hey, I've got a call spread here. I've got this, I've got that. And uh, you know, that, that's fine, but we're actually going to set some money aside, maybe, maybe five or $10,000. We're going to put it into an account and it's going to be uh, traded specifically uh, I, I guess specifically for this audience, but on this show, that's the, that's the account we're going to showcase all the time. We'll talk about it. We'll do demos in there. You can follow along. If we lose money, if we make money, you'll kind of see it all. So that'll be fun. I mean, it's only once a week, so lots is going to happen in between each Thursday, but we can kind of recap that and see what we're going. And uh, maybe we even put some polls on and see what trades you want to take and actually put those trades in. We kind of used to do that. But it was in discretionary accounts, but now we'll have an account dedicated to it. So that's enough about that. Uh, let me share my screen. And uh, screen share, where are we? And we'll bring up some charts. Okay, we're over here. First, let's take a look at ETH. ETH, a lot of people were expected to go up. Me as well. I did not play this 
you know, everybody's talking about an ETF coming out in the, in the near future. It's probably going to happen. Why not? It would, would surprise me if it didn't. Had a big run up. I mean, it went from 2200 to just over 3 k But if you look at my my very extremely basic charts, which is all I use when I'm primarily selling options a long term, what did it do? It came right up into that that kind of resistance area and stopped dead. Now, it was a little bit of a no-brain. And I, and I made this like a year ago, right? 3,000 is a whole number. You kind of expect that anyways, but there it is. So uh, I like buying ETH on pullbacks just like I like Bitcoin. Now, let me move over to Bitcoin here. This is interesting that we've kind of holding this range. You know, we poke our head up to you know close to 53,000, then right back down. And we're seeing sort of a pattern where uh, we, we're getting some selling pressure. And this is over the last week. We're, we're getting some selling pressure. And then the afternoon comes in. The inflows come into the, 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 the funds. Order execution happens later in the day in the U.S., kind of pushes it back up. We've... We're, we've always been skeptical about everything and anything, always skeptical. But we're, we're turning into a, a bit more believers in the long side, and we actually believe there could be a pretty big squeeze because of supply. If any of you guys are old enough to remember some of the uh, silver um, trades that happened decades ago where they tried to corner the silver market, you know, it's a supply issue, you try and control the supply. There's not enough Bitcoins being generated to to really satisfy demand. And as Japan and Brazil, other countries come on board, uh, allowing for funds to hold crypto, I expect that demand to increase. So I could see uh, what they call a big God candle in the, in the crypto or, you know, uh, you know, just a, just a big event pushing the price up. I wouldn't be surprised at the same time. Markets never trade just solely in one direction without pullbacks, without shenanigans. Could this pull back to 49, 48, 47, 46? Sure. Sure. Why, why not? You know, it's, it's the market. Anything can happen. If it does, I wouldn't expect it to hang around down there for too long because they don't want too many people to get on board. Right now, and this is something I'll talk about with Pierno, is, is, is I think that, uh, you know, there's a good chance we could kind of, we're, we're kind of bringing it back close to 50, close to 50. There's a lot of open interest there, a lot. And a lot of it is expiring tomorrow. I think once we get through tomorrow's expiry, it might be all clear ahead. So what, what have I been doing? So on this big rush up, I took a bit of a beating. Nothing too strange for, for options sellers. So it, it was causes to, to, to roll as rolling out into strangles, as moving things to different dates. Sometimes what we do is we store intrinsic value in longer dated options. So I might put some out to, you know, March or June, something like that, with the intention that I'm going to bring them forward to pull that intrinsic value in when the timing is right. And that's what we've actually been doing. And that's what we're doing our live streams every day. And I think that really, you know, if I got my little my little tool, what I'm doing is I've stored, if I go to uh, here, how far, how, May, June, okay, so I can, I can condense this down a little bit. I've got options that I stored, maybe strangles, short calls, short puts, way out here, kind of May, June. Well, I'm bringing them forward, you know, I, I'm, I'm sometimes to calls, sometimes to puts. I'm generally a little bit heavier on puts right now. Kind of concerns me because a lot of people are. But if, if the bias and the trend is up, I don't want to have too many calls. And if I do, I want to make sure they're well out of the money, easy to manage, easy peasy, and I'll pull in lots of time decay if it takes its sweet time. I have no problem selling car calls in a rising market as long as it isn't a crazy rising market. So that's sort of what I'm doing is I'm bringing so, you know, if, if, if uh, you know, something is worth, you know, you know, 0.395, uh, you know, that, that's what I've got to buy it for way out here in the future. I want to realize that 395 shorter term. It's obviously going to decay a lot faster. I can realize that intrinsic value. So that's what I'm doing. If I have to move things out again, I move things out again. I don't care. But th then I just slowly bring them back, let them decay, buy them back cheap. And that's kind of a massage in the book. And that's sort of what we're doing. Now, I did have a, a fair bit of calls up here through, through sort of the mid 50s they've all been moved up i'm not going to take a chance we could be at 56 in a heartbeat and i don't want to get caught so i don't have too much left they're they're uh, a little bit higher and i've moved a lot of stuff 
down through here into the 40s at various strikes. You know, this week, next week, uh, we've got some new expiries. We have the uh, the, uh, the 15th just came out today. We've got some new May 31s. The monthlies came out today. So we've got some options and, and you know, options on options. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I've got a gazillion positions, so I'm not going to write them on here anymore. In the future, again, we'll have a separate account set up and we can actually just show those positions. So let me go back to my screen share and go to uh, here. All right. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about uh, the strategy where, where hey, if, if you think, if you think that Bitcoin's going to go up and you want to take advantage of it, there's a few things you could do. And Peter and I can talk about that a little bit. You know, you can buy futures, you can buy calls, you can buy the underlying, uh, you, you, you can buy uh, debit spreads, you can do all kinds of things. You can sell puts, you know, that's not as aggressive, obviously. But there's things you could do, uh, but they generally all cost money. So how can we do this for free? Well, this is a favorite thing that we do. Uh, now, in the past, we kind of sold more, but now we're buying them. And that's buying a risk reversal. And a risk reversal, uh, I mean, there's there's a couple of definitions and, and people also combine them with futures. But in a simplistic way of looking at it, we can sell some puts and we'll use that money to buy some calls. So the calls are free, quote unquote free. The only danger is if, of course, the price goes down below the puts, those puts will become in the money. They could expire in the money. You could have to manage them, whatever. But if we actually, if I just go back to, um, let me just go back to my uh, uh, screen here. If I am selling puts down here and I think, you know what? Bitcoin's going to go up over the next six months, over the next year. I think it could be a 60, 80, 100. Who knows? Who knows? You know, there's all kinds of things out there, different different um, uh, models that people are talking about. But I feel pretty confident. I know there's going to be pullbacks probably. Let's just this thing, let's say this thing comes comes down to, uh, oops, I got I to change my, my thing here so you can see a little bit closer. So, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of uh, kind of, I, I'm not going to call it crazy support, but you know, the market sort of paused around 49 and a half, 49. It paused around 48. Let's say we come down to 48. I think you know what? That's the maximum. I don't think it's coming down lower than that. I'm happy to sell puts there and I'm happy to let them expire in the money. I don't mind taking possession of Bitcoin at 48K. If that's my my thesis, my hypothesis, it's like selling a cash secured put. You know, you, you, you like Tesla at a certain price. You sell a put, you collect the premium. If it goes down three, you get exercise. Eh, I got Tesla shares at that price. Very happy to do so. I'm viewing Bitcoin in the same way, and I never really was happy to do this before. I used to sell puts very, very lightly. Now I'm okay. Now, if I've got some puts kind of up here in the, the high 40s, low 50s, yeah, if, if we're pushing down, I might roll those away. I might roll those down but one by two. I might roll them out a little bit in time just to give myself more space. But some of them, I might just leave them. And I'm happy to pick up and accumulate more Bitcoin at those lower prices. No problem. So let me just quickly go back to um, uh, the screen. So if I wanted to look at a, a simplistic example here, uh, what have we got? Uh, 25th of February. Let's just say that I think that hey, this thing's probably not going to go below 50,500. We can see if I sold these 50,500 puts, 25th of February, that's Sunday, I basically get a dollar for them. Or, or you know, I call it a dollar. 0 0.01 of a Bitcoin, okay? Now, I can take that 0 0.01 of a 1, and I can buy, well, 52s. It's a small debit, 0 0.005 debit. Or I could buy some uh, 52 fives and do it as a credit. So it depends on how aggressive I want to be. I can sell further away from the money, and I'll get less money for it, and I'll have to buy calls further away. I can buy at the money, or I can sell at the money. If I sold at the money, I'm getting almost 0 0.02. Right. And I can buy, you know, multiple calls up here or I can buy, you know, one call at at, at fifty one thousand five hundred, for example. And we can look at this at logger tape, too. So we've got a, a, a May contract now. Let's say I think fifty thousand is sort of the basement. You know, I don't think it's really going to go below there. So I'm happy to sell these puts. I'm getting point zero nine three five roughly point zero nine four zero. 
That's a lot. And I can then take this 0 0.09 and where can I spend it? Well, I basically get a $59,000 call for free. So if you're right, you get it for free. If you're wrong, you can either choose to take possession or you can manage that, massage it out, do whatever you want with it. That's, that's the theory and that's uh, how buying a risk reversal basically works. I love this strategy. I used to use sell risk reversals more often on big spikes. I was happy to sell calls in order to buy some puts. Now, I wasn't buying the puts uh, to make money necessarily on them. I was buying them to protect my downside. Normally, I have a wing protection. That was a way for me to sell calls in a rising market and make money. So I would never spend as much as I received in the past. Now, when I'm buying these risk reversals, I'm typically using most of that. I love to do it at a credit because let's let's just say we do this 25th of Feb. Let's just say we did this and we sold the 50,500. We got, we got 0 0.01 for it and we bought uh, these 52 fives. We've got a small credit of 0 0.0025. Well, if the market does nothing until then, I just made a credit of 0 0.0025. It, it didn't go. I don't know when Bitcoin's going to go. It's going to go up this afternoon. Is it going to be in two weeks? Is it going to be mid-April, you know, around the halving? I don't know, right? So it's a nice way to, um, you know, at least you're, you're earning some money if you're not uh, wrong. You, so, so if you're right, boom, happy days, right? If you're wrong, just because it doesn't move up in the time you expected, Happy days, you're in a credit. If you're completely wrong and it goes against you, well, then you got to manage it. Simple as that. So uh, I'm going to turn this over uh, to Pierre. get his thoughts on on that and maybe some other ways. Uh, maybe he's got some clever insider ways that none of us know about. Uh, also getting Bitcoin for, uh, or, uh, getting some money from a rise in Bitcoin for free. Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> Go ahead, Pierre. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, I think uh, when I listened to you, uh, you were very creative in this market. <laughs> and, and, and that's actually what I like, because uh, you're, you're, you're saying several times, if you think the market goes up, and I think that's the, the, the right approach. Uh, not everybody thinks it's going up, obviously. Um, but um, it's, it's not like... Uh, setting up a strategy and then let it run until expiry. Uh, you have to be creative. And uh, so maybe if, if if this market is going up and, and you are long this risk reversal, being long risk reversal, I then assume you're long the calls short puts, uh, you, you can start shifting. You can start shifting strikes. <clears throat> you can think, okay, uh, we might stop at this level. So... I'm going to take some profit in my calls and I, I move my puts a little bit upward. Uh, you can do, uh, as, as Shane already said, uh, uh, this, weekend, uh, uh, this weekend strategies. Uh, the weekends are known as, as showing extremely low volatility. Um, it's, it's slightly higher currently, but still weekends are not doing much. Uh, so I, I like the way in, in, in receiving some credits, especially in the weekends. Uh, but I also think that if you enter in such a risk reversal, uh, that, that you should become an active player and a creative player uh, instead of setting it up once and then sit on it. And you might get right, but the week afterwards you were wrong because the market came down again. So it's a, it's a, a, I, I truly think that options trading is a continuous uh, effort in creativity and also having fun in the market. Um, I was looking today at the April options. I don't know if you can put them on the screen, Shane. Sure can, yes. <clears throat> because I, I wanted to make some remarks. So um, currently uh, we are trading around 51K, mm -hmm. uh, but in April, the future is trading at a higher level. Uh, so if we now, for instance, look at the 47 put, the 47K put, mm -hmm. that will generate around 5% uh, of a BTC. Mm -hmm. And you could buy something at around 5%, let's say the 60K call. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then you might think, yeah, but 47 is much closer to 51 mm -hmm. than 60 to 51. But that, mm -hmm. that has two reasons. That has a reason which is caused 
uh, by the futures. So longer mm -hmm. dated futures are more expensive than shorter dated futures. That's something mm -hmm. we call Tango in the market. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and next to that in option theory, uh, uh, if it's, it's, it's not a flip-flop method saying if the market is at 51K, then the 55K call should be as expensive as the 47K put. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a little bit differently distributed, uh, but I think you should take that into account and don't say, yeah, but this one is so close. Uh, uh, they're, they're playing with me. This is, mm -hmm. this is not correct. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but pricing is correct. And uh, the pricing is based on the probability distribution. Uh, mm -hmm. So here you're showing <coughs> the current uh, devol volatility. Oh, we, uh, we see healthy levels currently. Uh, that has been much lower in the, in the, in the past year. Uh, we saw uh, a, a quick rise before the ETF approval. Uh, then everything collapsed again from uh, like 75 to below 50 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, but, but now it's coming back to healthy levels. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's actually good. It's not as high as two years ago, because mm -hmm. then we were actually trading at much higher levels in volatility on average. Uh, but but the market looks healthy. Uh, we see ETF inflows. Um, I, I was not not that much surprised by the market going down after the ETF uh, approval uh, because expectations in the market were just too high. Mm -hmm. I think everybody was thinking now the market will start exploding. So this was a, a, a healthy sell-off and then the market retraced again. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. And, and you always have to be, and sometimes it's, you know, too obvious. Uh, and, you know, if, if the market has nowhere to go, then it's got nowhere to go. But uh, when everybody's, you know, everybody's leveraged long, you know, you got to think of the people who, who make all this possible. And that's the dealers and the market makers. Uh, you know, they're on the other side of trades and they're, you know, they're having to hedge and they need to unwind. They need to make some money. Otherwise, they're going to go away when none of us can trade. So you've, you've got to be able to kind of, uh, in my mind, you're always giving back a little bit to them because it's like, hey, thank you. Thank you for making that market. Uh, you know, we, we've got, you can see the open interest here at 50,000. There's a lot. And uh, at 60,000. So to me, it wasn't surprising that we kind of keep poking down to 50,000 because there's a lot of open interest there. I don't know if dealers are short or long gamma there, but it's not surprising. It acts like a little bit of a magnet. And, you know, we can see by expiry, we've got a lot expiring tomorrow morning. And the other quarterly expired the end of March, uh, a lot, a lot of open interest. That's just going to grow and grow. Uh, and we've got a 50,000 and 60,000 is the next biggest. So I wouldn't be surprised if we gravitated towards 50,000 until tomorrow's expiry. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it could finally be released and start moving up through the 50s again. Who knows? Uh, you know, there's still open interest down here and we could still, you know, move down into the 40s. You know, anything's possible. It's, it's trading. Um, you know, nothing's ever... Um, uh, a sure thing or taken for granted, but it's, it's, uh, I, I think to your point, you know, the volatility is now healthy, you know, there, there's good yeah. opportunities to, to sell uh, volatility uh, in general. Our strategy is to try to not get in the way of the upside too much. So we've cleared out those near, uh, near the money calls or even things kind of, you know, 10% away cleared out uh, because I feel like we could have some drastic uh, uh, up moves. I'd rather be uh, free of any in the money calls and jump on those opportunities, especially if volatility spikes to, you know, 70 or something. Wonderful. I mean, I'll, I'll sell that all day long because high, high volatility, let's say volatility, we get a huge move. Volatility goes 120 or something. Wow. If you're on the other side, other side of that, it hurts a bit. You got to manage it. Sometimes it can take a while to get it back. But when you can jump on it and sell on it, you generally should because that type of volatility cannot be sustained for a long period of time. It might last a few days, it might last a few weeks, but it ain't going to last too, too long because those prices are too high. Uh, you can always expect uh, uh, to sell it off. So, so we kind of have a general rule. We're, we're trying not to sell uh, calls less than about 60 IV uh, puts, uh, and everything we do is covered. Everything we're doing is covering right now. Not only because it's a little safer, but 
a lot of times we're covering far away. And it's not so that it's covered so we're minimizing our losses. We're covering it to satisfy the margin engine uh, because, you know, we, we want the margin engine to, to, to have a, a limited risk in there and give us more capital. Because if we do get a big move, what's going to screw you over and why you can't roll until you're right is if you've run out of margin. You run out of margin, you're done. You've got to take the loss, get it back, and then try and make up for it later on. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of interesting trading right now. Uh, I think that I think that there's good opportunities. We are sort of on board the crowd where we think we're going to have a general uptrend uh, for the next one or two years. But, uh, you know, healthy pullbacks are a wonderful thing because there are opportunities to get in a lower price, sell some puts, uh, get rid of any calls that you've sold, you know, buy them back cheap and, and reset, you know, reset, reset your book and, and get going. So I don't know if you've got too much to add to that before we get into some questions. Pirino? Can you hear me? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yep. No, you're on. You're on mute. <laughs> okay. It's there. You go. Must be on up. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I I think that's the that's the the approach. Keep keep trading and uh, don't go all in, but um, be active and 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 try to to feel the momentum. What's going on in the market? Uh, and then I'm I'm certain you will do well, and and I fully agree. If if volatility explodes, it will come back. And um, so uh, at the moment, as the market moves, uh, I think that the current volatility is justified. Um, it can be a little bit higher, it can be a little bit lower, uh, mm. but personally, I think that we're now at, at the fair level and that if we don't see really crazy stuff in the market and, and we might continue going up or something, but I think that this is the volatility uh, uh, to go for the, for, the, for the coming time. Okay, well, that's interesting insight. Uh, okay, so if it goes horribly wrong, I know who to blame. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> so let me just get to a couple of questions. We only have a few minutes. <laughs> That's right. Blame the coffee guy. Uh, 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 so Vladimir is asking, uh, I have a question to your guest. Any chance Deribit will launch touch or not type of options? Uh, the exotics, uh, we're, we're, we're not, not going to enter. Um, and uh, there are different definitions. Uh, so is this the, this the one touch options? Uh, he he didn't uh, specify. Vladimir, if you want to put put it in your, into the Q and A box, if it's uh, one touch or not, you, all right, we can get to that. In the meantime, yeah, well, uh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. At the moment, we're we're focusing on uh, on altcoin options. Uh, beginning mm. of March, uh, we will introduce oh. Solana options on the fifth okay. of March. And on the, the week afterwards, we will start listing XRP and Matic options. Interesting. When, when's uh, Dogecoin coming in? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a secret. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Not if you have information yet. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll call Elon and see what he says. All right. Uh, Gene, uh, hang on. We might have uh, Vladimir. So he says, Vladimir says, let's say touch BTC 50K in time or not is sort of his example for that type of option. You're saying no. Yeah, no, no, okay. we, we okay. won't have this. Uh, we are focusing now on, on linear altcoin options. Uh, yeah. That's that's actually our main target. We're, we're changing okay. some margin models, etc. But for options, it's the altcoin options, which we are really... Yeah, looking forward to list Solana again. Uh, uh, as you're aware, we have been uh, yeah. uh, offering Solana options, uh, but those will come back in uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, within two weeks. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so, a uh, question from Gene: uh, How did your trading e evolve along the years? Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer that, and I can add my own in later. Because you were a trader for many years, yeah. Uh, yes, I have been trading, but that was uh, more in the traditional markets, uh, yeah. more as a market maker uh, on volatilities, etc. Uh, so this is not like setting up uh, a position like I'm bullish or bearish. 
uh, but this is trying to find your opportunities within the volatility environment. And specifically in the last years, I was trading a dispersion strategy where you trade volatilities of the components in an index versus volatility of the index it itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, th those are really complex uh, uh, trading strategies, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they, they have nothing to do with the bullish or bearish sentiment. Yeah, so if anybody ever sits down to dinner with uh, Purino and Richard, be prepared for a very long, boring conversation as they go deep into this stuff. And, you know, you could just hang out with me and we'll have beer and we'll, we'll talk about other stuff. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, for, for me, Gene, I started trading in the 90s. Uh, you know, we started trading options for, for retail order for, flow for a big brokerage firm. I went into equities and scalping and all kinds of stuff over the years. So it changes, you, you know, and one thing I will say is – I like diversity in terms of what I'm trading. Uh, so futures or options on other markets or indices. And the reason is, is because you're always presented with other opportunities. If you're only trading Bitcoin options, you're, you're human. We're all human and we tend to overtrade a little bit and I end up being a little bit less uh, patient than I should be. Uh, so that's why I like to have other things going on as well. So I'm not just hyper-focused on one thing and trying to take advantage of every little opportunity because you're not going to be right all the time. You know, if you're right 60% of the time, you know, you're doing pretty good. So uh, anyways, uh, Stan, uh, what would you say on buying risk reversals December 2024? Oh my gosh, December 2024. I probably won't be alive by then. Okay. Uh, to be 100% sure about the expected Move well, you know we can look at uh, the December. Uh, where where we're way down at the bottom here. I mean, let let's say, I mean, you could buy the forty k or sorry, sell the the forty thousand put for example. That's that's almost thirty percent away from from the current price and get uh, you know point zero eight Bitcoin, eight uh, percent of a Bitcoin, and and you know you could buy <laughs> you could buy the hundred k. Wow. That's a big move. Here, here's one thing, I'll, and I'll, I'll clarify again. If I buy an option, whether it's a week or a month or three months out, let's let's well, let's just use an example here. Let's say this May thirty one. Let's say I buy the sixty thousand call for point oh eight, and next week Bitcoin makes a, a run up to fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty five, something like that, and it never does go above 60. If I hold that thing to expire, I'm going to get zero. I'm going to lose that entire thing. But on the way up, those vol the, the price is going to swell. Premiums are, or, or volatility is probably going to expand. I'll get more money for it. So, uh, and I think, Pierno, you mentioned something earlier when you're talking about you know, adjusting strikes and adjusting this. You, you might get some profit. Let, let's, or let's just say, you know, I sold this and I got 0 0.08. There's nothing saying I have to buy the offsetting call for 0 0.08. Maybe I'll pick up, you know, two of, you know, these 75,000s. Price moves up. I get some profit. I could take one off the table. You know, you do, your timing is, is important. And that's why I love to be overcovered on positions because it gives me something to sell into strength or weakness, depending on which side of the market I'm in. So um, I hope that wasn't... Uh, Okay. All right. A uh, question from Hele. Uh, Hele, you're, you're in Spain. I didn't know that. You, you must be very, very close to us. Uh, let me know where in Spain you're from. She, she, she says, last question here. This week I sold the December 50,000K put to buy the 70K December call for free. All right. I sold the uh, 100K December call for extra credit. Okay. If Bitcoin ends the year above 46K, I make a profit to my point. Exactly. My only worry, because she received the credit, right? Uh, my only worry is maybe the Vega. Yes, yes. But on a big move up, I should be in profit regardless, according to the portfolio margin risk matrix. Yeah, so whenever you're selling longer dated stuff, you're going to get a lot of Vega risk. And so when, when I talked earlier, uh, when I had to manage positions on this last move up from, you know, 42, 43, went up to, you know, 50, I was scrambling. I was throwing stuff out into these later dated puts, uh, later dated positions, storing the value there until I can bring them forward again. 
when you've got those later dates, you do have a lot of Vega risk. And that's why I love bringing them forward because it reduces my Vega risk. Because if my Vega is lower than my theta, I'm happier. But sometimes the Vega gets a bit out of control. You got to be careful. And I end up buying short dated coverage to kind of offset that. Pirino, I'm going to give this to you to put your, your thoughts in on that question. Yeah, for the Vega, I. Uh... I actually, I like the strategy, and uh, yeah, you do have a volatility problem, but that volatility problem will fade away in time, especially when market is going up, then actually you should say like, okay, my long calls at a certain stage, they will take over the, the Vega position of my short puts at the moment. Um, yeah, we, we see levels around 60, 61%. Um, it can be tricky uh, if you don't like it. If you don't like the Vega game, uh, then you should focus a little bit more on the front end. <clears throat> the front end brings less Vega, but on the other hand, it brings more Gamma, meaning that your optionality is actually bigger. So uh, if, if your, your P&L shifts will be bigger, on short-term options than on long-term options based on the on the deltas of your portfolio. Uh, it's also for, for the risk reversal. The, the question, is this eligible for, for December 24? Uh, I don't think if, if, if you want to have a bullish strategy and you will set up a risk reversal, uh, then you actually want to trade it on a, on a shorter term expiry as well. Uh, long-term expiry brings the Vega head headache. So if you trade a long-term expiry uh, risk reversal, then I would say that is more based on the volatility distribution of the whole curve in December. Then you can say, listen, out of the money calls, uh, skew is so much cheaper than the skew in the out of money puts. I will set that up. But that's a whole different game. Uh, that's not a directional game, but that's a game in skew distribution. Cool. One one last thing I'll ask you. So if anybody out there is saying, hey, you know what, I, I think that the market's probably going to keep going up over the next six months, year, year and a half, two years, and I want to be on board. Uh, what would you suggest for them? So we've got these risk reversals, a way to get in for free, but it does have the danger of going against your, your short puts. What are some other strategies you might suggest to people? Well, if you if you think selling a put is a little bit scary, uh, you can also think of selling a put spread. Uh, that's already a little bit safer. Uh, to make it more safer, you can say I buy a call spread because uh, that will mitigate my initial cost. So, so we have different stages of uh, how shall we call it aggressive uh, aggressivity or uh, uh, willingness to take to take a risk. Um, so the more risk you're willing to take, uh, the more you're getting towards a straight risk reversal. If you want to take less risk, you have to mitigate it somehow. So you mm -hmm. will not earn that much credit, uh, as Shane already uh, showed, or you will have a little bit less upside, but you will have less worries there. Yeah, great, great. And I, I apologize, everyone, we've got a little bit over time. And one thing I will, uh, I should clarify, and if, if you follow us each day on our live stream, when I'm selling that put for the risk reversal, it is actually a spread because I've already pre-bought cover cheap. Uh, again, this is why I always buy wing protection when it's cheap. You know, if, if the market's screaming up, I'm buying puts because I might need them in the future. And, and the same thing when the market goes down, I look for the value and then I build the spread out of it later. So uh, I do always have that protection uh, in place. I don't, I'm not selling those puts naked. So let, let, I just wanted to clarify that. Wonderful. Pierino, always a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, perhaps we can get you on again sometime uh, again in the future. Sure, Shane. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. And we'll see you next Thursday. Happy trading.